you can't be prepared for everything. And it's one of those things that you kind of shrug off and you're like, no, but I know it's yeah. generally going to happen. Like, it's a coffee shop. What can happen? A pandemic could happen. February of 2020 mm -hmm. was our best month ever. And then March hit and the pandemic hit and it was like our sales dropped to a number that we never even seen. So it was really discouraging, but we just did what we could. We took it one day at a time. It started from a young age. My brother got me an air press, which is like Ooh. a specialty brewing device that looks super crazy, but <laughs> relatively simple. So ever, ever since then, I really started to love coffee. And I also have family in the industry in Vancouver, Canada. Um, so whenever I would go to visit them, they're like the super cool cousins. I'd be like, oh, what's this? What's that? Just trying to like take it all in. And probably from the age of like even 14 or 15, I was like, this is cool. I want to do this. But obviously I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. <laughs> yeah. I probably just jumped right off astronaut and right into coffee or something. Everything I could take in learning things I liked, things I didn't like from different cafes. It kind of just went from there. Made up my mind, game set match, this is what's gonna happen. Finding leasing space in Boca is super difficult, especially finding something that kind of fit my vision of being enough space where people could come and be comfortable and not just come grab a drink and leave. Yeah. I'm Lebanese and it's a huge part of our culture for as long as I could remember like years of growing up and my parents or my grandparents making Turkish coffee and it was just like the center of the house we would gather in the living room and we drink Turkish coffee and I didn't really realize how big of an impact it was culturally until I was visiting Lebanon actually one year with my family and this random family was just sitting on the front porch and they're like hey we haven't seen you before uh, come drink coffee with us. Never seen that before in my entire life. Like, opening up your home to a complete stranger from a different country for a yeah. cup of coffee. Like, if someone did that to you in the United States, you'd be like, you're gonna rob me. <laughs> yeah. We want to provide a second home for people, be it people who are visiting from somewhere out of town or people who are just here and need a break from life, um, being able to come into our living room essentially, sit down, recharge, hang out with friends, yeah. banter with the staff back and forth. We're very relational, we love hearing people's stories, um, hearing what people do in their daily life, just and bringing that relational aspect of coffee into it. Because to me, that's that's what's really special. You can have really good coffee in a number of different places all over the world, but the best memories and like experiences that I've had usually revolved around like the environment and the staff that was there and how they interacted, how they prepared their drinks. Traditionally, a lot of coffee shops will work directly with one roaster, and then that roaster kind of works with different farms all over the world. So you could work with one roaster and have a coffee from Kenya or Ethiopia or Guatemala or Brazil or Mexico. Instead of working strictly with one roaster and kind of limiting ourselves to that menu, I really wanted to do a much more expansive program. So we're known as like a multi-roaster coffee shop. So having that variety is really fun for me. Most people don't care about it, but the people that care about specialty coffee and want to learn yes. more, it's such a massive like staying point mm -hmm. because you could come in every day and drink a different cup of black coffee for pretty much a month. Like you can make a good living in coffee, but there's way easier things you could do yeah. to make a living. Um, you really have to be passionate about what you do. Um, because if I didn't love what I did and the pandemic happened and our sales got quartered randomly, like, if I didn't enjoy the work, what's my motivation if we're losing money every day by being open? So, that, so while it, it sucked, like, this isn't the end of the world. Yeah. Like, there's people who were in much more dire straits and we're blessed to kind of still be open right now. Especially as a kid, it's really hard to kind of figure what do I want to do with my life? Yeah. It's hard to do it as an adult. <laughs> but <laughs> when you like know someone that's done something and you can see it working in practice, like you can go into this business and be like, wow, this is yeah. this works. Like you could do this for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. make a good living and be happy.
and it, I'm seeing it work right now.